Hello and welcome everybody to my prospect breakdown series and in this video I'm going to be covering Marvin Harrison Jr. wide receiver out of Ohio State. The synopsis of Marvin Harrison Jr. is that he's simply a monster. Marvin Harrison Jr. is the son of Colts legend and Hall of Famer Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison Jr. is like if his father was 6'4 and had freak athleticism. Harrison Jr. possesses elite ability at the catch point, has refined route running, has outside receiver size at 6'4, 205 pounds, and is the best wide receiver prospect we've seen since Jamar Chase. His unique ability at the catch point makes him a mismatch for most corners. He combines his height, long arms with his body control to separate himself on high balls. Marvin possesses good speed, good ability after the catch, and has versatility within the slot and the outside. He was productive in both years starting at Ohio State. In 2022, his breakout year, he was the highest graded wide receiver from PFF with a grade of 90.2. He also had 1,263 yards receiving, which was 6, 14 receiving touchdowns, which was tied for 4th, 3.12 yards per route run, which was 4th, and a 137.1 passer rating when targeted. In 2023, his numbers took a bit of a dip with a quarterback change at Ohio State, but he still had an 89.9 PFF offensive grade, which was 5th. He had 1,211 receiving yards, which was ninth, 14 touchdowns receiving, which was tied for third, along with a rushing touchdown, 3.44 yards per route run, and a 120.3 passer rating when targeted. Harrison Jr. won the Belitnikoff Award in 2023, which is the best wide receiver in the nation award. He's a two-time unanimous All-American from 2022 to 2023. He's a two-time first-team All-Big Ten, the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year in 2023, and a two-time Big Ten Wide Receiver of the Year. His strengths include his stellar ability at the catch point, insane body control, great athleticism, and refined route running. He has great ability after the catch, jump ball ability, vertical, and hand-eye coordination. He's a terrible matchup for smaller and less skilled corners. He also doesn't have a lengthy injury history, and it's really important to note his clutch factor, even at a position like wide receiver. He was the guy Ohio State went to late in the game and made multiple games ceiling or important touchdowns in the fourth quarter. According to reports out of the locker room, he seems to be a good teammate and a good person. He's involved in a few charities to give back to the Ohio community, and he also has the confidence and swag of a wide receiver one, even showing up to a game in Dior cleats. His only true weakness for me is his get off or speed off of the line of scrimmage. It's just not elite. He also isn't the strongest receiver at 205 pounds. His main objective is to either outrun or out finesse a cornerback at the catch point or with his route running, not to dominate a cornerback like an AJ Brown or a DK Metcalf would. Press can also sometimes negate him due to a slower release and strength. He also isn't a burner on the ground, however can still outrun defenders. But outside of that, his game shows no weakness that would really hinder his potential at the NFL level. But after that introduction, let's get into the film. Alright, so the first play in my film breakdown is going to be Marvin's first touchdown in the college football playoffs, uh, his only game actually in the playoffs, in 2022. So this is the first touchdown here. And Ohio State is going to run basically this concept. It's going to be four in-breaking routes with Marvin and the tight end routes a bit longer. And the defense is going to be running cover four, essentially, with these uh, two safeties picking up vertical routes here. And then running the play, Marvin breaks on his route. The safety Malachi Starks is covering him. Breaks the route, CJ Stroud sees that Marvin Harrison goes back inside on the route. Broken play now, Marvin Harrison gets separation and scores the touchdown. Looking at it from the other angle, we can see him cut inside and then cut out once the, once the play breaks. CJ Stroud points and Marvin Harrison is free in the end zone. Here's a play where Marvin Harrison takes advantage of miscommunication. Originally, they come in a cover four look, however, motion down to cover three. Keely Ringo, and I think that's Malachi Starks, miss interpret which guy is getting marvin harrison letting him out free in this soft zone however marvin harrison is on a long stretching out route to the end zone to where cj stroud wants to hit him on a hole shot here however keely ringo plays back however turns his head with cj stroud facing pressure breaks it cj stroud gets out marvin harrison sees that with his face towards the quarterback keely ringo's back towards the quarterback and Marvin Harrison just gets open for a free touchdown. All right, in a similar look to what the last play was, Georgia is going to come out in a cover three and then motion, or come out in cover four, motion to cover three. Marvin Harrison is going to be on a long stretching out route for the sideline. However, 
pressure, gets in CJ Shroud, rolls out to the right. Marvin Harrison notices that, eyes once again at the quarterback, flips his hips, and beats Keely Ringo deep. However, CJ Shroud throws off of his back foot, and the ball doesn't quite reach it, showing the other angle, facing pressure from both the defensive lineman and edge rusher. Doesn't quite get his full body behind it as he's throwing on the run. And Marvin Harrison doesn't really have a chance to get it. Play ends in a penalty and a pass interference. However, I mean, Marvin Harrison was wide open if CJ Stroud gets his full uh, body behind that throw. Marvin Harrison's going up against Will Johnson, great cornerback. Uh, and we have a quarterback change here. So this is my first film, or this is the first film that I'm going to be showing from 2023. This is Kyle McCord. Uh, and he, Ohio State's offense took a significant step back. Um, from CJ Shroud to Kyle McCord here. So eyes are just purely on him. Will Johnson gets inside leverage, jumps the play, and outboxes Marvin Harrison for the interception. Now, the last play I showed is where Will Johnson really succeeds when he's in press coverage, when he's on inside leverage, and when he's boxing out defenders. Now, this is where Marvin Harrison wins against a really good cornerback. This is going to be a long fade route against one on one man coverage. What he's going to do is get a good jump off the line, stack him, run outside, and gets the body control or and uses his body control and tracking ability to catch the ball which is a little low however that's great placement where only marvin harrison can get the ball so here's the throw in the air great throw marvin harrison back shoulder that's an excellent catch and an excellent route as well from marvin all right here's a play where marvin harrison isn't even the objective of the play however it still shows his impact in the red zone there's going to be two guys boxing him out which allows a touchdown as well all right, here's a, another play from this game against Will Johnson, where Marvin is playing his game. Takes advantage of soft zone against cover four here with these guys being the outside defenders. And this play just really highlights how good Marvin Harrison Jr. is at his hand-eye coordination and catching ability. Marvin Harrison being dragged down, one-handed catch against Will Johnson, which forces the penalty. Showing the other angle here, Kyle McCord on this play steps up in the pocket and even gets hit by Mason Graham. And one-handed catch by Marvin Harrison here against Will Johnson, pretty much draped all over him. As you can see, comes down with it, only one hand. Great, a great catch by him. With Marvin winning on that route there, this is where he has to play Will Johnson's game, which is press coverage. Um, and on this play, Marvin Harrison Jr. is not able to shake Will Johnson, getting his hands into his chest and really knocks him off his route. And that's just one of the examples of press coverage kind of hurting hurting uh, Marvin Harrison. Obviously, I don't Marvin Harrison isn't the strongest a receiver. He wants to win on his routes. He wants to win with his speed and, and ability at the catch point. But Will Johnson's gonna use his strength to bump him off his route. And this is the last play of the Michigan of the Michigan uh film breakdown. This is the touchdown that he scored. It looks like against cover six. You've got a linebacker uh against him. I think that's Mike, I think that's Junior Colson, and he's not gonna outrun Marvin Harrison in open space, and he scores the touchdown on a dig route. Moving on to the Notre Dame game where Marvin Harrison only had three receptions and 32 yards. However, he was targeted a lot. And in this game, Ohio State really wanted to run the ball and Kyle McCord really couldn't connect with Marvin Harrison on all of his targets. However, this play in specific is a great example of Marvin's route running prowess and how he really wants to attack cornerbacks, especially with his shorter routes. Marvin Harrison stacks his cornerback and then easily route wide open for the reception here. You guys won't even really be able to see Marvin Harrison, uh, but he's here on the right side of the line of scrimmage. And this play really displays his ability at the catch point. Doesn't truly shake the cornerback. However, just throw it up to him and he's gonna make an incredible high point with the penalty as well. And here's the other angle of the play. Marvin Harrison's just able to high point it. And obviously he's gonna come down with it. This wasn't all too common in the film that I saw of the six, seven games that I watched from Marvin Harrison, uh, but I did want to point this out here. Uh, Marvin's trying to once again shake this defender doing the same routes that he will always do. However, in this play, he takes like seven too many, or takes one, two, three, probably way too many steps uh, trying to get open here and is late to his route uh, and the ball gets batted down. That's kind of one of the things that I think will pretty easily be cleaned up at the NFL level, uh, but I did just want to point it out.
And then here's just a fun play that I wanted to highlight. Um, this is a total mismatch. Whichever corner or this is either a slot corner or a safety coming down from his position to guard Marvin one-on-one. -on -one, loses outside leverage and then is completely lost on that play. We can even see a bit of a dirtier route here. Marvin in and then boom out. And he's wide open for the touchdown here. It's just Kyle McCord doesn't necessarily see it, but the play ends in a penalty anyways. But that would have been a touchdown thrown Marvin's way. I saw on Twitter a few days ago saying that Marvin Harrison wasn't a great threat on the ground. And I'm going to say that's wrong. On a dig route here, goes for around 20, 25 after the catch. Here's another play where Marvin's route running prowess is on full display. This is, of course, against Kaylee King and just completely shakes him. And then this is just Marvin's clutch ability on full display this touchdown sealed the game against penn state for ohio uh this is total miscommunication in zone especially the linebackers bump together here this guy is on the flat and nobody is attacking marvin harrison on a dig route and he just goes a great blocking by 17 pace as well or pate as well and marvin harrison is just free for the touchdown here's the other angle of it linebackers clash together or the linebacker in slot and Marvin's just free for the end zone. And here's the final play of the breakdown. This is once again, another match mismatch. This is either a safety or a slot cornerback and Marvin's just gonna shake him and then hit the slant route for a touchdown. Marvin Harrison's signature route at the end zone is his fade route and great catch against Rutgers here. He at least like five fade route touchdowns in 2023. And it isn't a Marvin Harrison Jr. breakdown unless you show this crazy catch he made against Indiana, showcasing the body control to get that one foot in. My player comparison for Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be AJ Green or T Higgins, but Marvin, in my opinion, is closer to AJ Green in his frame, which is almost identical size. They're both 6'4", uh, almost 205, in play style. Both excelled at the catch point, were good after the catch, both were good route runners, and both had college dominance. However, Marvin is also similar to T. Higgins in frame, size, and playstyle. However, I think he's more of a refined route runner than T. Higgins is, and T. possesses more play strength and dominance uh, at the catch point. However, both excel at the catch point. And both also have incredible body control. But I'm going to be giving Marvin Harrison Jr. a 7.5 prospect grade, which means he's a blue chip prospect or a can't miss prospect in my opinion. He's my number one player in the 2024 NFL draft class, and he's my number one receiver as well. However, all board rankings and position rankings are subject to change, but I don't think I'm going to change this one. A 7-4 grade means I think he has the potential to be a perennial pro bowler or an all pro level player. And I think Marvin Harrison Jr. does have the potential to be a minimum pro bowler and I could make an argument that every team in the NFL should draft him. However, the Chicago Bears, Arizona Cardinals, New England Patriots, New York Jets, Tennessee Titans, and Los Angeles Chargers should all be focusing on drafting Marvin Harrison Jr. top 10. But that's going to do it for my prospect breakdown on Marvin Harrison Jr. I think he could easily be a top three pick within the 2024 NFL draft. But let me know your thoughts on Marvin Harrison Jr. Let me know your thoughts in this video. And make sure you guys go read my full report on Marvin Harrison Jr. on my Substack link in the description, as well as follow following my Twitter and my YouTube, of course, but make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe and share this video with your friends and make sure you stick around for the many prospect breakdowns I'm going to be doing for the 2024 NFL draft this off season. Once again, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.